you for staying with Sharad and I on Consider This. Joining us on the line now, we have Dr. Helmi Hajar Maidin, Consultant Respiratory Physician at Pantai Hospital KL. Dr. Helmi, good evening. Thank you for coming on the show tonight. Now, it's uh, the end of day one of the conditional MCO and already we've seen a significant increase in activity today. Uh, was this the exit strategy that you envisioned? Um, I think the exit strategy has come as a bit of a surprise to most people, given how quickly it was um, changed. We only found out about it towards the end of last week, and then suddenly today, and I think it caught quite a few of us unaware. Right. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, so in terms of what you would have preferred to see, I mean, what would, do you think was the, the deficits or the, maybe the, 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 the strengths of this particular approach to unwinding or winding down the, the restrictions of the lockdown? I think the, the intention is good. I think nobody is going to argue with the fact that you need to reopen the economy because otherwise the consequences of how we react to the virus might be worse than the consequences of the viral infection itself. Mm. But we need to do this in a very timely fashion. And I think the timing is what caught everyone by surprise. And when it comes to educating and empowering members of society, it's not going to happen over a weekend, nor is it going to happen over a week or two. Of course, we've been told for the past few weeks that we need to flatten the curve, that we need to keep social distancing, keep our hands clean, things like that. But the messaging has been a bit convoluted at times. And when that happens, people do get confused, as we have seen today, you know, despite all the all the efforts put in so far to educate and tell people. You can see today people, maybe perhaps out of desperation, have been going out and breaking rules that unfortunately were there to keep us safe in the first place. So are you saying that perhaps from a public health point of view that the current lifting of the, uh, the MCO was premature? I would think that from a public health point of view, it would be better if we could do it in stages. And that means both in terms of industry, so deciding on which industry needs to be opened first, and also in terms of geography, because what is applicable in the middle of Kuala Lumpur may not necessarily be so for, say, Perlis or in Kedah. So we need to engage all the relevant stakeholders, and that would be both folks at federal level as well as at state level. And of course, we also need to ensure that the there has to be an increase in testing as well, because there's no point in open, opening things up and then to find that we reach some sort of bottleneck down the line, both in terms of testing as well as treatment. So, uh, Helmi, there has been a, a, quite a heated debate, I mean, globally about the question of testing. And even on this show, we've brought uh, epidemiologists on to talk about the value of testing. Government, federal government and the Ministry of Health says targeted testing is the way to go. Uh, some epidemiologists say, well, you know, a test is only a snapshot in time and that if you, unless you do frequent testing, we're not. And the question is, do we have the wherewithal to actually do the frequent testing? testing? Is that what you're suggesting? More testing, continual testing? I think given the restrictions that we have in terms of outreach as well as the limitations that we have in funding, it is not likely that we'll be able to do the degree of testing that we actually would require or need. The, the different types of tests also play a role because what you can do with the PCR test, for example, is very different from what you can do with antigens or antibody testing. And you'll find lots of debate with regards to the applicability of all these different tests. Mm. But ultimately, it depends on the approach that the government, whether it's in Malaysia or anywhere across the world, would like to use. Are we going for a philosophy where we accept the fact that the virus is going to be in society or in the community anyway and be very targeted with the treatment that we give and only target those who are really unwell and accept the fact that it's going to be very prevalent in society? Or do we go for trying to get every single potential case out there right. and control things and do proper contact tracing to avoid it from spreading further. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, once again, the idea is to flatten the curve, which is to limit the excess numbers of cases that are going to potentially overwhelm our hospitals and our healthcare facilities. So at this point in time, I think the KKM, the Ministry of Health, is doing the right thing. Right. It is doing the right amount of testing and targeted things very appropriately. It's just that it would be a shame if all this were to be undone if we suddenly were to face with an influx of cases.
Okay, I want to come back very quickly, Dr. Helmi, to something you said a little bit earlier about, you know, we've had 40 odd days of of kind of educating the public about social distancing, about personal hygiene, about how to kind of break the chain of infection. Now, you mentioned that, that the, the messaging so far has been convoluted, that there's not enough education for the public. Is that, is that correct? Could you clarify? There has been lots of attempts, but it will take time for things to percolate down to an individual level. Look at smoking, for example. You know, we've spent decades trying to educate people on the dangers of smoking and secondary smoking. And it's quite um, applicable here because the danger when it comes to COVID is not just to yourself but to people around you. And yet we see human behavior where we are unable to assess risk appropriately. And once again, we need to be very aware of the fact that not everyone comes from the same background. So some people may not be able to receive the necessary messaging all the time. Some people may be a little or a tad bit confused because what's applicable one week ago is not applicable today. Last week, we were told that staying at home is the most important thing. This week, we are being told that the economy is the most important thing. Both are right. Neither aspect is wrong. And there's a lot of nuance to how things are put through. But when there are different messages from state level and from the federal level, then you can imagine any layperson, and to be honest, even professional industry players, are going to be very confused as to what's the right thing to do. Mm. I have one uh, question which has to do with the ultimate uh, border lifting, which is, uh, you know, letting people and g getting global as we were for, for decades now. Do you think that is going to prove to be our undoing? Lifting our, our, the floodgates to, to people, well, not necessarily floodgates, but at least allowing foreigners to come in, Malaysians to come back, for us to move across international borders? I think that's quite way down the line. We will need to deal with the issues of opening up interstate travel first. And eventually, I don't think we have a choice. We will need to open up our borders internationally. But once again, that can be done in stages. You could, for example, um, allow trade cargoes to be um, moving as opposed to passengers. You could allow travel to very restricted or limited lists of countries. You could put in requirements for testing both before and after travel. So there are a lot of things that you can do. It just requires a little bit of planning and a bit of, I think, most importantly, a bit of agility in the way that things are governed. Because what's applicable one month ago may not be applicable today. Mm. It's very important that we have some form of agile governance, not just in Malaysia, but I think both regionally and internationally. Right, wonderful. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight, Dr. Helmi. That's all the time we have for you on this episode of Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me, Sharad Kutan, signing off for this evening. Thank you so much for watching and good night.